moment, I want you to close your eyes. Listen to the voices of passionate and zealous believers who genuinely desire to make a difference. Maybe that's on social media. Maybe it's in the media. Maybe it's the person who goes to your church or lives across the street. Maybe it's you. Then pretend that you know nothing about Christ and your only view of Jesus is the example and words you hear or see from believers as they state their case or try to win their argument. Does this draw you nearer to Christ? Is it confusing? Does it turn you away? And these are hard questions to ask ourselves, but they're important because people are watching our lives and they're asking if Jesus is worth following. Now, it's not our responsibility to carry the entire weight of loving the world on our shoulders, but there are people watching us and listening to us and wondering, what is this faith? What is Jesus all about? In chapter four, we meet Simon the Zealot. He's a bit of a mystery. His name suggests that he's part of a movement to bring about change. But the Zealot movement wasn't fully active until years later. Some believe that he was a part of the early underground movement, while others say that he was simply a man of passion or zeal. Jesus often changed the name of a disciple to reflect his character, or maybe even what he saw inside of that disciple. But Simon remained Simon the Zealot until the very end. He was a man of passion, a man of zeal, a man who wanted to see change take place. What did this zealous man, a man who desired to walk with Jesus, think as Jesus preached about turning the other cheek? What did he want to do the day that he watched Jesus hang on a cross? From the very beginning, Jesus taught this very passionate and zealous man that there was an effective way to change a broken world, and that was through sacrificial love. Now, maybe you struggle as I share those words because love can seem passive, and sacrificial love can seem impossible, especially when you're dealing with difficult people or a difficult situation or a difficult issue. Jesus was a man of conviction, without compromise, and steeped in compassion. He was strong, but his motivation was always love. Following his example doesn't silence our voice with difficult people or with difficult issues. It just changes the way we speak. In 1 Peter 3, it says, Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. For it is better if it is God's will to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. Those verses are found in 15 through 17. What is our come with me invitation when dealing with difficult people or difficult issues? It's to prompt change rather than just make our point. This might take place in your closest relationships. It absolutely can take place on social media like Facebook. Jesus didn't shy away from his convictions or conflict, and he always shared the truth. But he didn't fan the flames just for the sake of winning an argument. He taught Simon the Zealot, and he teaches us that a gentle answer steeped in love and truth has the potential to affect change in the heart of others but mostly it changes 